Good morning and welcome to America's Home Cooking. I'm adjusting the uh, camera right now. Uh, I want to fry uh, some cod and I'm going to use the Moroccan spice mix which I gave you but I want to do it in breadcrumbs instead of flour. Now I don't have breadcrumbs in the house. Now this is how probably your great-grandmother did it. She would take her bread and she slices it. And what she's going to do is stick it in the broiler and she's going to toast it. Now we cut it about a half inch thick, okay? And put it on a broiler pan. I remember when you broil, you're not adding any butter to them because, because we want to dry them so we can later them. You leave the door open, you hit broil, and we're going to start toasting this. Just gonna wait for that. I think that's enough bread for what I need it for today. So your breadcrumbs are gonna have different flavors. If you use different breads, this one I'm using is the prairie, the flat prairie bread, and that's the one I'm using. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to grater it, literally grater it. And then when I get to the soft bread, I'll stick it back into the broiler and I just keep on toasting it like this and rotating it. And the side that we're going to use to grater is this side. We're not going to use the finer ones. We're going to use this side, the coarser ones. Because that'll give us just the sides that we're looking for. Now. If you say, but I like Italian breadcrumbs, so you like it with cheese. Once you make your plain breadcrumbs, you could take Italian seasonings and pour it in and adjust it to the flavor that you want. Or you can use other seasonings if you wish. If you want cheese, you take the Parmigiano cheese and you add it to it until you get the cheese flavor that you want. So you can make from simple breadcrumbs, you can make Italian, or you can make a cheese breadcrumb, or you can make any kind of breadcrumb mixture you want. Just keep on adding the seasonings to your breadcrumbs. So we have to wait till those get toasted. When they're toasted, I will be back. Now my heel, as you can see, burnt a little. So you take a butter knife and you just scrape the burnt off. Heels always burn because of their position. Because they always have that curve on it from this side. Now, this is toasty on this side. Be careful, you don't. That's how you do breadcrumbs. And what am I going to do with this when I'm done? Stick it back in the broiler and toast it some more. this on both sides. So what I'm going to do is just run it in here. That's how you make bread crumb. actually spend these stores to go and toast bread and make breadcrumbs for you. And to put seasonings in for you. Being at a honey cat taught me a lot. Well, I'm getting breadcrumbs all over the place knowing me. But that's how you make breadcrumbs. And I'm going to continue doing this. I'm going to put those breads back in and toast them some more. 
so I can add some more breadcrumbs. of toast, grater it in some hot milk, and drink it. That'll settle your stomach. Because that's charcoal, and it sits there, and it gets rid of gas. And when you do it like this, your breadcrumbs because you use different bread. Now, I'll sit there and put these back in the bowl, turn it back on, and toast them some more on both sides. And I will continue doing this until I finish. Just keep an eye on it because it does get very hot in there very soon. So I'm going to continue until I get ready. Okay, I got all the breadcrumbs I washed them next week, John, with it. What am I going to do with this leftover bread? Put it in here when I need breadcrumbs again. I'll just sit there and continue toasting them and grinding them up and see. Because it's homemade, see how dark the breadcrumbs are? They're much different than what you get in the store. Well, you know they make me eyes right then. I have no idea. So I'll stick this bread in the refrigerator. Even if it gets stale, I can still sit there and toast these. If you have a toaster you don't want to use the oven, you can use the toaster. You might have to take it down a couple of times before you get it where you want it. But you're not wasting the bread that way. Now to make this bread, I know it's already nutritious. But I am going to add some wheat germ to it as well, because I want the double. And the big pieces, you can just put them in your compost and go out in the yard, or you can crumble them up with your hands whatever you wish to do. All right, but that's how you make breadcrumbs. And if you want to make them nutritious with and add Italian seasoning cheese, you can get raw, uh, to no, toasted wheat germ and add it to your breadcrumbs with the flavorings and you can pick up the value even up more. But I would use toasted wheat germ with breadcrumbs, because if you use fresh wheat germ, I think it would go rancid, so it would be best that you toast your wheat germ or either buy it pre-toasted. Just cleaning some of this mess up that I have. Okay. Now I have cod here, and cod is very moist. I have patted dry it, drained it, and it's still moist. So it's a very moist fish, even when you pat it dry. So I'm going to get a rack out. I already have a frying pan here. I'm not going to put a lot in it. Now I'm going to take this Moroccan seasoning. I'm going to add it into the fish first before I bread them. See, they're so moist when I put them in the breadcrumb, they're still going to uh, stick together. See? Just showing you. So when I put them in the breadcrumb, I know they're still very moist. I know it's 
something like this is uh, a little more time consuming, but it's so rewarding, it really is. I would have showed you how to use your uh, self-rising flour, but I have enough bread and other things in there. I don't need it right now, but I will be showing it to you and showing you that it does work and that you can make your own. Prices going up on meat and stuff, and they want to give us artificial meat, but they use actually cancer cells to actually grow that meat. I don't think anybody really wants to eat that. So uh, we have to find other ways of getting a lot of protein into our bodies if you can't buy a lot of meat for your family. The whole grains and stuff have it, and then certain combinations. This is why I'm trying to show you how to do a lot of this. So if you are slightly having trouble getting meat into your family, protein into them. You can do this and we'll get that protein in there into your family. I usually buy two pounds, but this was $13.99 a pound. I said, okay, well, I'll just take one pound, please. Thank you very much. And <laughs> that was pretty much it. Now we're gonna let this set just a little bit I know you could sit there and say vitamins are expensive. Yes, I know. But when you sit there and um, you, powdered milk is expensive, wheat germ is expensive, uh, brewer's yeast is, when I look at paying $7 for wheat germ for a big jar of it, and I see one meal is $15 with meat, I said, I've got to make this meat count, so therefore I'm going to have to figure out how can I increase Increase the value and at the same time make sure that my family has desserts that are nutritious. Medical bills are skyrocketing, I mean, God. So how can I keep my family as healthy as possible, you know, without them having to run to the doctor every every little wimple of, you know, a cold or something. And uh, this helps. It really does help because I know we're all hurting. I am too, believe it or not, I really am. It, it's tight for everybody. And so if I can help you to help your family to better health and how to make it more nutritious so you can make ends meet, it's my pleasure to do this for you. Now what am I gonna do with these breadcrumbs as I was playing with them, talking with you? I'm gonna stick them in the refrigerator when I'm done. So when I need them next time, they're ready for me. I'll leave the fish for about three minutes. So while the fish is doing that, I'll heat this oil up. You know, personally, maybe I am just naive, but I can't see why prices are going up. I remember when milk was less than a dollar. I remember, and I can't see how the prices can go up unless somebody got greedy and wanted more money, and then it's a chain reaction. We're using the same cows, we're doing this, but the more expensive the meat gets, the less cattle there's going to be. There's going to be less milk, so they're going to jack the prices up. The interest rates go climbing up. You go to buy a home, they make it impossible. They make it impossible and squeezing the American people. And then taxes. My father had more money, and he bought a three-bedroom, $30,000 home. We had a front and backyard. We were two, one two-car and a truck family. Plus, he had a hunting camp with a house on it, wood burning stove and all. He went, so we had a lot more than what we have today. And he was just middle income. 
middle income is disappearing unless you have two incomes coming in and everything else. And then what happens is, is the wife can't cook because she comes home, she needs instant food to feed the family, and she's got all this going, and he's trying his best, but he's not getting uh, promoted and stuff. And he needs money to make ends meet so his wife can sit there and do what she has to do at home. So they both have to go to work. So when she goes to work, she has to buy work clothes. She has to wear, uh, she's going to wear makeup. She's going to get her hair done and everything. You just think of how much pressure are on these families that should not be there. Something is terribly wrong. When the government is taking 60% of our taxes, they didn't take that much in my lifetime. Not at all. Almost zero. So you think about that. Before, if the government wanted money to spend, you had to buy U.S. savings bonds. But now, they say, no, we're just going to take it out of your money. No, your money was yours before, and if you wanted, um, uh, if there was war, or the government wanted something to build or repair the roads, they had to get the people's permission. In other words, if you wanted this to happen, buy our savings bonds, and they would pay you back after 30 years or so, you would get interest and stuff, and they grow on you. I don't know what's happened. The government has decided they've got their own little clique. They're going to pick up your taxes. They're going to make all these departments and everything else. And it's slowly chiseling away your rights. You don't have the rights to just about anything at this point. Maybe to breathe, but they might take that away from you too. So, you know, we don't know. But I'm just talking about my lifetime, my little life. I don't know what it's going to be like in 20 or 30 years. The way our governments are forcing the people into the uh, this world market, a one world government. Do you remember when we tried doing that, the Tower of Babel? They said they wanted to build the tallest tower. God had said spread among the earth scatter among the earth. We didn't do that. So he made sure he brought down the Bible. He gave us different languages. You just think about it. And I think we're pretty much heading in the same direction again. But we're doing it on a grander scale because there's more of us. Anyway, I don't know. I just don't know. But if you're paying 60 and they want more money from you pretty soon, you're not going to have any money for yourself. Have zero, and then the government will allot what you can have for the month, and that's it. We've got to take back our rights. I heard one video, the guy asked, when can we take up the arms? Because we're ready. People are getting tired of the government. The government is too big and taking too much from the American people, and we're working for the world. We are the slaves of the world now. You know why? Your tax dollars are not building our roadways. They are not educating our children. They are not taking care of America's force. They are not protecting this country. Our soldiers are overseas. And listen to our presidents. We need billions of dollars to send to another country. We're sending money here and we're sending money there. That's your tax dollars and mine. Do you want them to have it or do you want your roads fixed and having a good education of the three R's? We just got to get our priorities in order. time to fry with it. After this and I want to make sure it doesn't go bad. See when you take vitamin A deoxycotoprol what it does is it makes sure your cells don't die on the inside of you. They have a longer life expectancy instead of dying young. If your cells don't get what they need they die faster than within that seven year where your body repairs. So you're walking around with dead tissue.
Now that's a gross thought, isn't it? <laughs> so you want to keep your body going. We're going to drop one in and see how it is, and we'll know if it's ready or not. Well, I think it's ready. Okay, I'm going to fry this, and I'll show you when they're done. Okay, here they are. That's it.